Welcome to the Stephen Hartman Podcast. What's the show? No one knows. Who am I? Who am I? Who cares? Let's start the show. What's up, people? It's Monday. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody had a good weekend. Mine went by way too damn fast. I swear this whole week just flown by. I'm just like, I can't keep track of time anymore. <laughs> but I do know it's Monday, unfortunately. But got to start the week somehow, right? <laughs> I don't know. Mondays are never Monday for me, truthfully. I don't think I ever actually have Sunday and Saturday off. So, my weekends are usually like in the middle of the week or some shit. <laughs> I don't even have two days off in a row this week. That's all right. Anyway. So it's Monday, like I said several times already. Um, I totally missed Friday's episode. We kind of had some issues. (laughs) The damn doctor had us running to the hospital thinking that uh, the baby might be coming. And then apparently not. (laughs) So had us all panicked like a motherfucker. I'm like, I'm at home trying to put flooring in. And my wife and uh, the sister-in-law are at the appointment. And uh, I start getting these texts like, oh, shit, we got to go and all this shit. And I'm just like, what the fuck's going on? And just turned out to be a false alarm. But apparently she can come at any time now. So, I mean, I kind of knew that anything after 36 weeks, but it's just like, damn, it's kind of crazy. But. I mean, in the baby pool, I said the 11th, so I'm close, but we were kind of hoping for a little bit more time, but yeah, the doctor had us panicked, so I did not do an episode on Friday. By the time we got back home and everything, and it was just, just didn't have the time, and then the weekend came, and I just never did a show. But here I am today. Um, it's October, man. So it's Halloween time. I love that. The weather's already turning fallish. You know, every night it's pretty damn cool. We're barely seeing, you know, 80s or whatever during the day. So it's been really nice. I enjoy it. I really love fall. The weather's really great. Like fall and spring are the best times of year. It's not hot. It's not cold. It's just kind of right there. You know, you can kind of bundle up if you need to or whatever, cuddle up with someone, you know, but like summer and fall, uh, summer and winter, (laughs) just either too fucking hot or you're just frozen. So I definitely prefer the other two times a year. But since it is October, like I said, I was going to do like a, horror movie countdown or whatever. So since I've already missed a couple days, I pulled up, yeah, I guess four, four movies for today. And then I also wanted to talk about another movie that I just recently watched. I'm sure a lot of other people may have already watched it. It was released on a HBO max on Friday. I think we watched it last night. Yeah. Or we finished it last night because we only watched an hour the night before. But uh, The Many Saints of Newark, I guess is how you would say that. It's the Tony Soprano story. It's like the prequel to the series. And uh, I didn't know how I felt about them making this. I kind of felt like there was really no reason. Like the series was pretty fucking good. Me and my wife recently watched it, I don't know, a year or so ago. One of the first times we ever watched it. It was really good. I laughed like there was, there was a lot of comedy in it and you know, there's a lot of sad shit. And of course the mafia angle and all that shit's just cool as fuck. So I was a little worried how they were going to do this movie. 
the one cool part is, is they're using his son. So, I mean, it looks like fucking Tony. So it's, it's pretty cool at that point. <clears throat> now, as far as the movie here, let me, uh, I'm going to put that up on the screen so you can see what I'm talking about right now. Uh, as far as the movie, it was, it was pretty good. Now, like, it seemed like it was just a big old Easter egg thing for fans, you know? Like, if you're a big fan of The Sopranos, you probably knew every little thing that happened in the movie. Because even I was all like, oh, yeah, that's that story that they told in this the, the show. Oh, yeah, that's another thing that happened. Like, you know, you kind of get to see the full details of exactly what happened in those stories, you know, because they just kind of glossed over it in the show or whatever but here you get to see like how it actually went down like uh like i'll give one example it's not like a spoiler or anything but like uncle june and tony get into a big old fight in the series all right and it's about when uncle june said something to tony about he's not a professional athlete or something like that and he took it personal for, you know, I can't remember how many years that is, like 30 years or some shit like that in between the time he said it and the time they fought about it. And in the movie, you get to see the whole situation go down. Like uh, Tony's talking about going to college to be a football player and all this shit. And Uncle June just makes that shitty comment of, hey, you're not professional material or whatever the fuck he says. So it's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, the, the whole movie is pretty much that way. It just seems like you're like, Oh yeah, fuck. Yeah. I know. I know what this is, you know? And then like, there's one major part where you're just like, Holy shit. I did not see that coming at all. <laughs> so like that, that one part of the movie, like made the rest of the movie, like, okay. I'm kind of glad you made this because now I know some shit that just kind of blew my mind. So to me, I'm pretty sure they're setting up a series with his son. They want to show young Tony growing up because that show was killer for HBO and like fans like constantly rewatch that shit. So they know they have an audience for it. And I assume if let's just say like 60 million people watch the movie, which is easily probably done because I mean, they get like hundreds of millions of views on shit. So, um, I could imagine them just pushing a series forward. I'm pretty sure that they probably already had that planned, but they just want to see how well this movie does. And I think this movie will make people want the series to come truthfully. Cause I was just all like, damn, now I want to see like, okay, I understand that's how Tony was made, but now I want to see Tony from that point. Cause you know, we only got to see him from like, what was he like 45 or some shit in the show. So if they did that, like how long they have to do with this kid, like they can do like 20 years if they wanted to, but I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what they do. I really enjoyed the movie. So if you're a fan of the Sopranos, definitely check it out. It was definitely worth watching. I liked a lot of it. Like there was a couple parts where I was just like, I don't understand why this is in the movie. Cause like, I don't, it didn't seem to have anything to do with the show, but like I said, they may be setting up a, sh a series to where like those things, you know, that's probably like the main focal point of the series or something. But yeah, check it out. It's on HBO Max. I think it's like two hours and ten minutes or something like that. Because we pretty much watched half and then watched the other half the next day. It was just late. So we we're like, all right, we'll stop here. <coughs> um, so I guess I'll just segue into the horror movie part. Yeah, I guess I'll just go ahead and do that. Um, I'll go ahead and kick off my camera again. This is like really hard to do because you have to not only make a list, but it also has to be kind of a countdown and it's hard to put certain movies 
before other movies, but then it's like, well, like, yeah, I understand. I, I enjoyed this movie maybe a little bit more, but this other movie definitely scared me more or whatever. You know, it's hard, hard to figure out the, I, I can't really figure out what I'm, the word I'm trying to use. Like, it's hard to put these movies in order, you know, because there's so many different ways to like the movies. But anyway, uh, for the 31st movie, I went with a classic, the evil dead movie, the original ash and a chainsaw, man. Like one of my favorite, just go to silly horror movies. You know, just over the top, ridiculous. Like the scenarios in this movie are just hilarious half the time. And like he made a whole living out of this movie. I think it was like four other movies came after this. And then there was a whole series. I think he did another series of just like Ash Against the World or something like that. So he's turn this dumb movie into a pretty big franchise. But I put it here just to start it because I'm like, I don't know how to put someone last. And I'm not saying that because he's last, that it's not a good movie. I enjoy the shit out of the evil dead. So that's my 31. My 30. This is like another one. People are probably going to be mad that I'm putting this at number 30, especially my wife. <laughs> Cause she fucking loves this series, but I'm just putting this one here. The original resident evil. I love the series. It's a great series. The games are fun. So more than likely another one of these movies might be in my top 30, but I'm just putting the original one here because like I said, it, it's just hard to, start a list. So I, I you know, I'm just kind of trying to get a blend of movies going here, but like I said, just because it's number 30 does not mean it's not a good movie. I fucking love this movie. I love the the little girl that's the the Umbrella Academy or the Umbrella Academy. <laughs> Wrong show, dude. Uh the Umbrella Corp, the little girl that's the security voice and all that shit. I just love that creepiness, the whole zombie aspect from the fucking you know biological stuff we're we're even dealing with that shit right now so you know just that all that in this movie it it makes for a a good horror movie for sure like i said it's hard to put it at number 30 but there are definitely you know chances that i will be having another one of these in the future uh, this movie is another one that I know a lot of people love. They use the one part in the movie for memes a lot. Uh, the cabin in the woods. It's a really good movie. I like the premise a lot, like how the whole thing is like a simulation and all that shit. Uh, I'm not going to spoil like any endings or anything, but like, the whole premise of this movie is like these people go to this cabin and it's like being controlled. I'm guessing by like hell or something. It's like hard to, you know, they didn't really explain it, I guess, but it's, you know, it, it's like they have, you know, a ritual where they got to, you know, get these eight people or whatever it is to this cabin so they can kill them every year. And then there's all these different scenarios of how they kill them and all this shit. But it's just, I don't know. It's a really enjoyable movie. I like it a lot. Um, my number 28 is Us. And uh, if you haven't seen it, it's a kind of a weird movie. You may have to watch it a couple of times to really pick up on all the things. I know I did like the first time I watched it. I was just like, I don't really understand what happened here. <laughs> so you may have to watch it a couple times, but I put this here. Like I said, it, 
it's almost like it like i kind of just did a couple of different genres here i noticed that but uh it it's a very good movie it it's not like typical horror but there are definitely some creepy scary parts of the movie and i like this guy like he makes some very interesting work i i used to love him on uh key and peel on comedy central and to think that he does this kind of stuff is kind of crazy because he you know he was so funny but then yeah he has this kind of dark shit in his mind for horror you know but uh yeah us is very unique because it's like like i said i don't want to really give away the end but there's like another set of this family like terrorizing them and shit and they just don't understand what's going on and it's just really creepy because like you know they're they look like they're the opposite you you know like you it's like your the your evil self or whatever you know he said I, i'm trying not to give away any 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 endings can't fucking talk right now uh but it's it's a very good movie so check it out um that's pretty much it for the horror movies today because yeah it's the fourth i just wanted to get my four movies in um let's see here oh i should probably turn that banner off um i will I was going to talk about my life in Vegas today. Uh, I didn't spend too much time there, but I had some interesting times. Uh, I moved to Vegas. I guess it was a little over 10 years ago. Uh, me and my dad, we left from Rio Rancho to move to Vegas. We were just kind of done being in Rio Rancho. You know, there was some stuff going on and we just, we bounced. And we pretty much just packed up our car as much as we could. And we left everything else. It, like we literally just left the apartment and left with our clothes and a few boxes and shit. <clears throat> and we just drive to Vegas, like hardly any money, you know, just hoping, you know, family or whoever is going to help us out and shit. And we get there and we get there like way too early uh so we're like having to wait because you know it's like four o'clock in the morning or some shit like that so we finally like meet family or whatever and uh i can't remember exactly how it happened but we ended up getting like this shitty hotel i can't remember what it was called it was some kind of beach thing or something i can't remember yeah but anyway, it was the shittiest hotel I've ever been in. And I still can't believe we even stayed there for as long as we did. I think we were there for a good couple of weeks. There was one bed. So me and my dad would like trade spots. I would sleep on the floor. He would get to bed and vice versa. Um, the craziest part was when people would take showers upstairs it would just start leaking into our bathtub from the ceiling. It was like a waterfall just coming down like, Oh, that's an interesting feature. <laughs> Didn't know we had a waterfall shower. So like, I don't even know if we ever even took showers in that thing. I think we may have like went to family's houses to shower and shit. I'm not even sure. Cause I don't remember getting in that shower. Now, while we're staying at this place, uh, there was a couple of times that, you know, we get like a big tall can of high gravity beer or something like that, get a buzz on or whatever. But this one time we're walking to 7-Eleven, which was just like right around the corner from our house. We're going to go grab some like milk and munchies and shit because we we're like hungry, getting ready to go to bed or whatever. On the way back, my dad looks down and he's like, what is that on the ground? And he picks it up and it's this fucking nice nug of bud <laughs> and like some stinky ass shit. We're like, Whoa, that's crazy, dude. 
like, how is that just sitting here? You know? And we're like, well, I wonder if like someone around here was, you know, selling and the cops showed up and he just threw that shit on the ground or something. Cause we weren't in the best of neighborhood. Like you could tell there was some shit going on. Like Vegas was one of the only places where I felt I had to carry a knife, like open, ready to go. <laughs> it was scary, but it was just like, Holy shit, dude. Like it was, you know, just amazing that all of a sudden we just had some smoke cause we hadn't had anything for weeks cause we didn't know nobody who like, it was kind of, you know, weird to just be asking people. So it was just like, fuck yeah, dude, that's awesome. So we go home, we get all trashed and shit. It was nice. I can't remember exactly how it happened, but I know we went to Boulder station to get some breakfast. They had like the two ninety nine steak and eggs. So we go do that. And I think, I, th- I think we paid with a 20. So I think we got like 10 bucks back, maybe like, yeah, about 10 bucks. And my dad's like, well, let's go play some games. You know, let's go play some slots or whatever. And I'm like, dude, why don't we try this dollar machine that's right here? (laughs) He's like, dude, a dollar? Like, we normally play like five cents. I'm like, I know, dude. Let's just try this dollar machine out. You know, fuck it. We got a few dollars. Just put it in there. We'll pull it a couple of times. It's, you know, not a big deal. So we put the money in. I think I pull it like three times. On the third time... I win. It goes up to like 35 bucks. We're like, holy shit. Well, that pays for dinner and a little bit. It's like, uh, should we stop? And I'm like, let's just play it to 30, dude. And I think it may have been one or two more pulls on that lever. And the next thing we know, that number is just flying. And I'm like, holy shit. It's over 100. It's over 200. It's over 300. And we just can't believe this. We're like, holy fuck, dude. Like, when is this going to stop? We can't tell what we want. It doesn't really say. And we're just like, oh, my God. And, like, it goes over $500. And we're still just like, holy shit. This is fucking nuts, dude. And by the time it stops, we're at, like, 645 bucks. And I'm just like, bing, cash out. We bounce. We leave that shitty little apartment and go find our shitty hotel and we go find an apartment. (laughs) We fucking put that money down for fucking rent. We move in and that's where we stayed pretty much the whole time after that. We moved into these Sand Hill apartments and we lived there until we left Vegas. So it's crazy that that one pool, you know, fucking paid for our rent and shit, man. Like I said, some change from breakfast. That was like such an amazing thing. Like it just felt like Vegas was like, here, man, we know you're, you're in need, man. Here, here's enough money for you to get your shit. (laughs) It was pretty nuts. That was the one really cool thing about Vegas. At any time you can win several hundred dollars. (laughs) Now that was my biggest win. I don't think I ever won any more than $250 after that. But I hit a lot of hundred dollar winners, like especially like playing deuces and shit and see, like I worked at a gas station that had slot machines. So what would I do when there's no customers? I would go play slot machines. So every now and again, just at work, I would fucking hit a hundred bucks. And then what was even crazier is the people that would play, if they would win, they would throw me money. So there were times where I was getting tipped like a hundred to two hundred dollars a night because these dudes just kept getting, you know, hitting Kino jackpots and shit. So like that one of the best things about working in Vegas. Now, like I said, the bad parts just it's scary, man. There's a lot of crazies. There's a lot of nutty people. And then every weekend, millions of fucking crazy people come in. 
I don't know if it's millions, but it's a lot of fucking people that go to that city every weekend. And a lot of those people probably aren't the best of people. They want to start fights. You know, they don't care. They're in some strange city. They're, they'll fucking burn some shit down. So that was always a crazy thing too. Just all the tourists and it was just too much. The traffic was insane. All the bad of that outweighed any of the good stuff. Like even though we can go get, you know, two ninety nine steak and eggs or whatever the fuck and play some shit and win a lot of money. Everything else in that city was just like, it's just not enjoyable, man. The only time it looks nice is at night and that's because it's dark and it covers up all the shit. And then of course all the pretty lights cover up it, you know, help too. So like, I don't know. I had a little bit of fun when I was there, but I definitely would never go back. Like I would not want to live there. I should say I wouldn't, I'll go back. I'll go visit all the time. I like Vegas, but I would never live there. Like just too crazy. It's a hundred degrees for like six months of the year. The winter time is really nice. I will say that the, the winter is the best time to go there. But it just, I don't know. I never really felt super safe there ever. So, and I was probably living on the wrong side of town. It's a huge place. So I probably could have found some better areas to be. Because, yeah, we definitely weren't in the best of area. But we weren't in the worst either. So that's where it's like, eh, I don't know if it really matters in Vegas. Because it's just so crazy and big. And there's just so many people. It's just kind of crazy. So, like I said, I'll go back there and visit, but I would never live there again. We didn't even make it two years. I don't think <laughs> there was a couple of other reasons why we left, but it was mainly just because we're like, I don't like it here, man. Just it's been it's been rough. So we bounced and we came back here. That's pretty much what we did, and been here since. Like I said, I like Albuquerque. It's a really good place. Um, the weather, like we have like maybe 10 days over a hundred and the rest of the time it's like nineties during the summer. So it's not too bad, but it gets a little much, especially with the humidity. Like I said, we got shitty swamp coolers, so that doesn't help. And then the winters, man, we pretty much never have a winter. Like we'll have like one snow, maybe the rest of the time. It's just like 50, 60 degrees. So that's the one really good thing about this place. That's one thing that probably really keeps me here. It's the weather. It's convenient. We don't sit in traffic. You know, I'm never just at a light four times because there's, you know, 400 cars in front of me. That just doesn't happen here. The only time you're in a traffic jam is like, if you're going to a concert, <laughs> that's the only time. And that's for like 10 minutes. So. Those are the really good things about Albuquerque. He said the the mountains, you know, all that shit. It's it's really nice here. It's just I wish there was some, you know, I, the crime shit is getting really bad here. It, it wasn't that way, but we're we're like leading <clears throat> in homicides, or not leading the country or anything, but like in our our state has never had so many homicides ever, and we're like, you know, we still got several months to go. <laughs> so it's just like, damn dude, like, can we like figure that shit out? And maybe I'll want to stay here. I mean, I'm probably stuck here for a while anyway, but it's just like, damn, I would love for things to get a little better here. Cause I would, I would love to stay here. It's, it's pretty decent. Like I said, everything we need is here. It's not like, there isn't entertainment or some shit. So like, that's not my problem. It is literally the worry of crackheads walking up and down my street now. And you know, you got to worry about them breaking into your cars and all that shit. And it's just like, damn, like, I wish I wasn't that way around here. Like I said, this, 
the Northeast Heights of Albuquerque used to be like, you know, that was kind of the pricey upscale, nice areas. And it's just kind of starting to turn the shit around here. So we may end up just having to move a little North because that's where it's, you know, a little nicer. It isn't so overrun with, you know, the homeless and all that kind of stuff. So not like we have a lot of homeless, but we have a lot in areas and they just kind of, they're all kind of crazy, man. So, I mean, that that's probably not news to anybody. I'm pretty sure every city has some kind of homeless issue, but yeah. Um, Vegas, I don't know. It's a very fun city. Me and my wife went there for our honeymoon. We've been there a couple of times for just vacation. It's fun. There's a lot of stuff to do. You know, we've been to the mob museum. We've been to several places to, you know, do the tourist thing. That's what Vegas is for. It's to go out there, have a little vacation, get drunk, you know, do some crazy shit, stand in line at an oyster bar for 10 hours. (laughs) You know, just dumb shit. But it's definitely not, you know, anything that I want to live at. That's for sure. (laughs) Um, That's pretty much my Vegas story, I guess. There really wasn't much. Like, I was going to kind of go into all the work we were doing there, but that's just all kind of boring. So, Um, besides that, I'm going to make this one a little bit short today because I got to get ready to go to work. I just wanted to make sure I got this shit done and out today because I felt bad that I've like last week I totally fucked up. So, um, just thank you for listening, like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, leave me a comment, whatever. I appreciate everybody for listening and, uh, we'll catch you guys on Wednesday for another episode of sports talk. (laughs) All right, guys. Later.